Welcome to Lecture Online. Now let's go ahead and formalize the concept a little bit better. What are the conditions for a limit of a function to actually exist? So, a limit of a function only exists if and only if the following conditions. So mathematically we'll write it as follows. The limit as x approaches a of some function of x will have a limit, will equal to l, l being a limit, if and only if the limit can be found by approaching the value from the left, that's what that little minus sign means, so let's say if a is 3, let's start from 1, then go to 2, 2.5, 2.9, 2.99, and so forth, from the left, from the negative side of that value, it doesn't have to be a negative number, but from the left side of the value, and if we then get the limit, and at the same time it's an end condition, so both conditions must be true, if we take the limit as x approaches a but from above, meaning from the right side, so if a is equal to 3, about 3.5, 3.4, 3.3, 3.2, 3.1, 3.01, and so forth, if we get the same limit approaching the limit value for x from both directions, then, and only then, the limit exists. So here's an example where the limit would not exist. Let's say we're trying to find the limit of the function as x approaches 0, and the function is equal to x for x less than 0, and equal to x squared plus 1 when x is greater than 0. Graphically, the function looks like this, and you can see again there is a break there at the value for x equals 0. So, when we approach it from the left, you can see that as x gets closer and closer to 0, y will approach closer and closer to 0. So it would appear that in the limit, as x goes to 0, y would be equal to 0. But then when we actually plug in 0 for the function, we get y to be equal to 1. So therefore, we do not find the same limit as when we go from the right side, when we start from x equals 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and so forth, you can see it in the limit, it looks like the function approaches 1 when we come in from the right, it approaches 0 when we come in from the left, since 0 is not equal to 1, in other words, we do not get the same function right here, therefore we can say that this does not have a limit when we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 0 in this particular example. And so therefore, there we formalize the concept a little bit better, so there we see that for there to be a limit, we need to be able to approach the limit value for x from both directions, and we're supposed to get the same limit value for there to be a valid limit. And there, that's how we do that.